Welcome to Inside the Vandals, a weekly show covering men's and women's basketball. Inside the Vandals is brought to you by the School of Journalism and Mass Media and by the Coeur d'Alene Casino, Hotel, Spa, and Resort. Welcome to Inside the Vandals. I'm Izzy Haddon. And I'm Zach Kellogg. Idaho's men's basketball team picked up their first conference win last week against Portland State here in Cowan Spectrum. Yeah, Izzy, under head coach Zach Claus, the men getting their first conference win after two close losses against Idaho State and Weber State. I had the chance earlier this week to talk with head coach Zach Claus about the established post presence. They're starting to get down low ahead of this physical Montana State game, along with having Markel Frazier, an established leader, back out on the floor. Now joined by head coach Zach Claus. Coach Claus, how's it feel to have your first Big Sky win as head coach of Idaho men's basketball? I honestly will never feel that way about it. And like I talked to the guys after the game, it, I, was, I was thrilled for them that they were able to compete, get a good home win. We talked about defending our home court before the game to bounce back after the two losses we had on the road. Uh, it was a testament to our guys staying sharp mentally and competing against a good Portland State team. Out on the floor, Marco Frazier, a guy who's missed a lot of time with that hip injury, he just looked like one of those leaders that was helping motivate the guys. He was a really vocal presence. How does it feel to have him back and help him be that leader you guys, uh, leader on the floor for you? Well, I'm really happy for Markel because, like you said, to come back from not only one, but to come back from two hip surgeries, do that in the offseason, we've had to really be smart with regards to bringing him back. He doesn't know how to go half speed, so when he's working uh, on the practice floor in the weight room, where regardless, he's going to go all out. And with the help of our terrific trainer, Justin Pomar, who's been working side by side with him ever since last year when he first experienced the pain, you know, it was something that we just, we had, we had to shut him down for a little while and allow his body to recover. And slowly we've brought him back, and you're right, I mean, he was terrific in the game on uh, Thursday night against Portland State. He did a really good job of attacking off the dribble, finishing plays. He was working hard to, guard, to defend and rebound, and he's got a wonderful spirit about him. I mean, that was one thing through our initial practices for the first month. There were days where he didn't practice, but you could still come in our gym and hear his voice feel his presence because of his attitude and when he's right he's a true he's a tremendous asset to our program and on the floor he has that quickness that quick first step ability to get past defenders how is it having that on the wing for you guys well you're right in terms of the quickness off the bounce but he also brings that added dynamic as far as having the strength to finish in the paint uh, which he did and we're going to continue to ask him to do it and he, again he's been terrific for us and now I want to talk about, touch on the post presence. Scott Blatney's been having a great start to the Big Sky season, and Jack Wilson now coming along and playing for you guys. What have you really been pushing for them to help them get a little bit more physical down low, and how is it going to carry over against Montana State team as a big guy weighing 250 in the paint? Sure. We keep you know harping on those guys daily to impose their will in the paint and to be a physical presence, whether it be offensively or defensively. You know, from an offensive standpoint, it's not simply just posting up and trying to score. It's being an unselfish teammate, being a willing screener to free up your teammates. And what we continue to stress to them, the better screener you are, the more quality looks you're going to get. And so we talk to them about that offensively and taking great shots for them, which in turn are great shots for our team, and then just competing possession after possession on the defensive end and that sometimes that's being involved with an on-ball screen sometimes that's interior post play and then obviously every possession it's cleaning up on the glass and coming into this game Montana State's been pretty solid defensively like going high 50s low 60s and points allowed for you guys are you guys going to go with more an inside out approach of getting to the post and then spreading out the floor or are you guys really just going to try and hammer home with Jack and Scott inside and allow them to go to work well the nice thing for us is that we've got multiple guys that can score the ball both inside and out you know we're gonna we're gonna have a good focus in terms of come thursday night what we're stressing in terms of getting good interior touches in our with the paint um, you know we're going to continue to try to create off the dribble to get into the paint and create easy baskets that way and then finish with jump shots and getting ourselves to the free throw line so it's going to take a balanced attack to, to take on a, a really good montana state team Coach Claus, thank you for joining us and good luck against the Bobcats. Thank you. Izzy, going into this game against the Bobcats, what are going to be the keys that the Vandals need to look out for to pick up a win? Zach, Montana State has two main players that the men are going to have to focus on. One with a big inside presence and a sharp shooter from the outside. And they have a really airtight defense. Let's take a look. 
One of the main defensive matchups for the Vandals is going to be Harold Frey, a sharpshooter for Montana State. This 6'2 senior from Norway is shooting 42% from the field, 36% from three, and averaging about 16 points a game. If the Vandals give him any open looks, he's going to knock them down. The Vandals must also be aware of Jubriel Bilo, a big presence inside who will dunk it every chance he gets. Bilo shoots 67% from the floor, averaging around 12 points a game. This will be a challenging matchup for the Vandals inside, but with the level Scott Blakeney has been playing, we can expect to battle down low all night long. Montana State also brings an airtight defense, holding three of their last Big Sky matchups to under 62 points a game, one of the best defensively in the Big Sky. For Inside the Vandals, I'm Izzy Haddon. For centuries, we, the Coeur d'Alene Tribe, have honored our resources as good stewards and our region as good neighbors. We've built a world-class casino resort hotel that supports hundreds of jobs, funds health care and other services, and has generated more than $33 million for education. Because we've been an integral part of this land for generations, and we will be for generations to come. Now joined by women's assistant, Krista Sanford. Coach, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. All right, first up, I want to talk about the Portland State game you guys had. You guys were down five points, and then just the 24 to four run really put you guys back. You were kind of the main person defensively in terms of the game plan. Kind of what went wrong in that game that helped unravel that score? Well, you know, first off, I think a lot of times our offense kind of helps our defense, and we were missing a lot of open shots and things, so it was you know, it was difficult. You know, here, you know, like tie game with nine minutes to go, and then, you know, we're missing shots, and they're going down and having time to work the clock and, and get the looks they did. We did a good job of stopping their initial offensive attack, and then, you know, they started to go to some of their junk things and get isos, and um, at that time, we were a little tired, obviously, in the fourth quarter, and I think, um, you know, just the emotion of not making offense of plays kind of hurt our defense there down the stretch. Being with this team for as long as you have, always being the offensive threat with Michaela and Taylor, now you guys mostly a defensive team like in the days of Valley Ford. Kind of what's that feeling now with this team of just kind of now you guys are kind of shifting a little bit where you guys are are kind of elite in the conference. Yeah, you know, I think we still have great offensive players. I think, you know, right now we're just trying to find and mesh together and, um, you know, bring everything together. And again, Mike and Tay aren't here and we're quite a few games in without them. You know, I thought they were great offensive players, but I think we have a little bit more length and size on the court now with those two gone. And so, um, you know, our defensive principles haven't changed all that much, um, but we, we really emphasized it in the preseason. I think our, our newcomers and things are understanding the toughness that we need to bring and um, some of those things that we maybe didn't have in the past years where we could just outscore people. So um, that's been great. And I think, again, I think, you know, we're gonna come together offensively. We're we're running a new system completely and so it's it's not the same for anyone so it's it's stuff that takes time and um, we're just hoping by March that it, it all comes together. All right now coming in probably one of your toughest games up to the season 4-0 Montana State one of the best teams offensively and you guys are the top two defensively. First we'll talk about the offense for this team they have four scores scoring double digits two over 16 points a game what are you going to try and do to make sure that you kind of run them off the line or make sure that they don't get going early in that game? Like you said, our defense has been good and it's it's what's won us quite a few games this year. And so um, I like our game plan. You know, I really like what we're planning on doing against them. And um, our girls have been good about executing the plan. And I think, um, you know, you got to take away Fallon Free She's a great transfer. We've seen her before, which some of the other coaches in conference have, ha haven't seen her. So um, we, we defended her really well when she was at North Dakota. And so um, that's going to be a huge part of our game plan is limiting her, her attempts and trying to take away her strengths. And I think um, as a squad, I think if we execute the plan, um, you know, they're going to have a tough time scoring. You know, they've played two home games and maybe played some teams that aren't the best defensive teams in the conference, which now if we can execute our plan, you know, I, I hope that we can really limit some of their, their action and things. So they're quick, though. They're quick and they have four people for their starters or seniors. So they know the system, too, which, you know, is a little different than us right now. They, they've been in the system, been in the, the program for a number of years. And so, you know, trying to really take away some of those veteran players is going to be huge come Thursday. Coach Sanford, thank you for joining us. Thanks, and go Vandals. We'll be right back with Inside the Vandals. And Izzy, you guys will be heading out on the road, going to Bozeman, facing off against the Bobcats as well, trying to bounce back from that Vikings loss. We'll update you on that score when it becomes available. But first, the men playing here at home against Montana State. Chris King with the call for Inside the Vandals. I'm Zach Kellogg. And I'm Izzy Haddon. And we'll see you all next time.
Jackson.